and the President of Ukraine. Both leaders will now sign an historic new bilateral security agreement between the United States and Ukraine. Good evening, everyone. Last year at the NATO summit in Lithuania, the United States brought together every member of the G7 to sign a joint declaration of support for Ukraine. Twenty-five additional countries joined us quickly. Each agreed to forge the long-term bilateral commitments with Ukraine. President Zelensky and I have just now signed that agreement between the United States and Ukraine. Our goal is to strengthen Ukraine's credible defense and deterrence capabilities for the long term. A lasting peace for Ukraine must be underwritten by Ukraine's own ability to defend itself now and to deter future aggression any time in the, in the future. The United States is going to help ensure that Ukraine can do both, not by sending American troops to fight in Ukraine, but by providing weapons and ammunition, expanding intelligence sharing, continuing to train brave Ukrainian troops at bases in Europe and the United States, enhancing interoperability between our militaries in line with NATO standards, investing in Ukraine's defense industrial base so in time, in time, they can supply their own weapons and munitions, working with the U Ukraine's partners to build a future force that is strong, sustainable, and resilient, and supporting Ukraine's economic recovery as well as its energy recovery after Russia has repeatedly targeted Ukraine's energy grid with massive attacks and the futile attempt to break the will of the Ukrainian people. All these lines of efforts and others are laid out in this agreement. Additionally, the G7 achieved a significant outcome this week on the matter of Russia's frozen assets in Europe and other places outside of, outside of Russia. Back in 2022, two days after Russia's invasion, Members of the G7 and the European Union worked together to freeze $280 billion in Russian central bank funds outside of Russia. I'm very pleased to share that this week, this week, the G7 signed a plan to finalize and unlock $50 billion from the proceeds of those frozen assets. To put that money to work for Ukraine, another reminder that to Putin, we're not backing down. In fact, we're standing together against this illegal aggression. The agreement that President Zelensky and I just signed also lays out our shared vision for a just peace, a peace rooted in the UN Charter and the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity, a peace with a broad base of support around the world that holds Russia accountable for the damage it has done in this war. We will see this vision strongly affirmed at the historic peace conference happening in Switzerland this weekend, where Vice President Harris will represent the United States. Finally. This agreement accelerates Ukraine's integration into the European Atlantic transatlantic communities. It includes major commitments from Ukraine to impact and, and, and to, excuse me, to implement democratic economic and security reforms in line with the European Union's accession goals and NATO's programs of reform. While we take this step, the United States is also intensifying pressure on Russia. Yesterday, the U.S. Treasury Department made clear any bank anywhere in the world that deals with sanctioned Russian banks, companies, or individuals risk being sanctioned themselves. And we announced roughly 300 new sanctions on individuals and companies that are helping Russia with war effort. They include key parts of Russia's financial sector. I'll wait till it goes over. as 
as individual and entities that supply Russia with items critical to, to its defense production, like micro uh, like microelectronics, machine tools, and industrial materials. We also we also sanction more Russian future energy projects, that Russia's natural gas oil projects that are under construction and are not yet fully operating. Putin is counting on revenues from these projects. Our sanctions will disrupt those plans. Plus, at the G7, we discussed our shared concern about countries like China for resource supplying Russia with materials they need for their war machine. And we agreed to taking collective action to push back against that activity. Let me close with this. We've taken three major steps at the G7 that collectively show Putin we cannot, we cannot wait us out. He cannot divide us, and we'll be with Ukraine until they prevail in this war. First is the bilateral security agreement just signed. Second, historic agreement to provide $50 billion in value from Russian sovereign assets to Ukraine. And third, an agreement to ensure our sanctions efforts disrupt third countries that are supplying Russia's war efforts. That will increase pressure on the Russian economy. Collectively, this is a powerful set of actions, and it will create a stronger foundation for Ukraine's success. Two and a half years ago, Putin unleashed a brutal war on Ukraine, and it's been a horrifying ordeal for the Ukrainian people who are so brave and incredible. It's also been a test to, for the world. Would we stand with Ukraine? Would we stand for sovereignty, freedom, and against tyranny? The United States, the G7, and countries around the world have consistently answered the question by saying, yes, we will. We will say it again. Yes, again and again and again. We're going to stand with Ukraine. And thank you, and I now yield to my friend from Ukraine, President. Thank you so much, Mr. President Biden, dear President, dear journalists, dear Ukrainians, dear Americans, and thank you so much. Thanks, Italy and Georgia, to, for an invitation. Uh, dear friends, today is a truly historic day, and we have signed the strongest agreement within Ukraine and the U.S. since our independence. And this is an agreement on security and thus on the protection of human life. This is an agreement on cooperation and thus on how our nations will become stronger. This is an agreement on steps to guarantee sustainable peace and therefore it benefits everyone in the world because the Russian war against Ukraine is a real, real global threat. I thank you very much, Mr. President, for your leadership, which is reflected in particular in this agreement and in your years of support for Ukraine. I thank our teams, both teams, thanks very much for making sure that the details of the agreement are really good. And of course, I want to thank every, every Ukrainian soldier, all our people whose courage made this level of alliance between Ukraine and the United States possible. And I'm proud of our people and what Ukraine can do. And I'm very grateful to all Americans, to everyone in America who strengthens American leadership. So, under the points of the agreement, first, the agreement contains a very detailed, legally binding part, and this means the credibility of America's support for our Ukrainian independence. Secondly, security commitments from the United States are based, among other things, on the sustainability of security and defense support, not only for the duration of this war, but also also for the period of peace after the war. And we will definitely ensure peace. Third, it clearly states that America supports Ukraine's efforts to win this war. Fourth, the agreement has good provisions on weapons for our defense, where specifically on the Patriot systems, where specifically on the supply of fighter squadrons to Ukraine, that's right, plural, squadrons including, but not limited to, F-16s. We have worked for a long time for this. 
The agreement is also very specific about the supply of the necessary weapons, joint production and strengthening of the defense industries of our countries through our cooperation. And this is something that will not only provide security, but also new good jobs for Ukrainians and Americans. The agreement also outlines what is needed in terms of intelligence information. The agreement contains key aspects of protecting the lives of our people. Fifth, it is very important that the agreement also addresses the issue of Russia's just responsibility for this war and its attempts to destroy Ukrainians. America supports both fair compensation for the damage caused by Russian strikes and working out ways to ensure that frozen Russian assets are used to protect and rebuild Ukraine. The agreement also includes sanctions and expert controls that will make Russia feel the pain for what it is doing against the freedom of peoples. And two more things. I'm grateful that the philosophy of our security agreement is in fact the philosophy of the alliance. And that is why the issue of NATO is covered through the text of the agreement. It states that America supports Ukraine's future, future membership in NATO and recognizes that our security agreement is a bridge to Ukraine's member membership in NATO. It is very important for all Ukrainians and for all Europeans to know that there will be no security deficit in Europe, which tempts the aggressor to war and makes the future uncertain. Now we are clearly defining everything. We will cooperate, cooperate for the sake of victory, make peace guarantees effective and provide the necessary security for our people. And thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership in the G7's decision on 50 billion loan for Ukraine. It's a vital step forward in providing sustainable support for Ukraine in winning this war. Russian immobilized assets should be used for defending lives of Ukrainians from Russian terror and for repaying the damage aggressor caused to Ukraine. It's fair and absolutely right. Mr. President, thank you, your team. I would also like to thank the United States Congress for their support, both parties, both chambers. Thank you and thanks to every American heart that does not betray freedom and supports us. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Now what we'll do is we're going to take uh, two questions from American reporters and two a, a question each from two American reporters and a question each from two Ukrainian supporter, reporters. The first the first person I'm going to call on is Colleen Long and the Associated Press. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, about two weeks ago, you changed course to allow Ukraine to fire U.S. weapons into Russia. Given the reported successes, would you consider further expanding the parameters on U.S. weapons into Russia, even despite your concerns about escalation? And on the news from home, um, you're going through something that so many American families go through, uh, the intersection of addiction and the criminal justice system, um, but you're not like most families. Was your son able to get a fair trial? Do you believe the Justice Department operated independently of politics? Um, and for President... Let me answer your question okay. and you ask his question, okay. okay? With regard to the first question, it is clear that the near abroad, meaning just across the, the line of the, the border with Russia and Ukraine, that it makes a lot of sense for Ukraine to be able to take out or, or combat what is coming across that border. In terms of long, long range weapons, longer range weapons into the interior of Russia, we have not changed our position on that sort. With regard to the question regarding the family, I'm extremely proud of my son Hunter. He has overcome an addiction. He is, he's one of the brightest, most decent men I know. 
And uh, I am satisfied that I'm not going to do anything. I, sa I said I'd abide by the jury decision, and I will do that, and I will not pardon him. Um, President Zelensky, uh, a number of leaders here in Italy, including President Biden, are facing upcoming election challenges. How will the security agreement signed tonight and the other promises of support continue if they are not in office? And what's your contingency plan if they don't? Thank you for this question. May I ask? First and foremost, I'd like to thank the people of, of the nations, first and foremost, to the United States, to the countries in Europe and other, on other continents who have supported us since the very beginning of, of the beginning of this absolutely unjust war of Russia against the people of Ukraine. That, and that is it. They, they've been killing people, that homes and territory, all that is very important. It is part of life. But first and foremost, we're speaking about people and lives of people. You understand? And this war was unjust since the very beginning, the war of this evil, whose name is Putin, the war against the people of Ukraine, and he has killed so many people. To, to say that it is not him, it, 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 there was a military man who did it, the last one is just an instrument. His, and he is playing this instrument, and therefore it is important for us that since the very beginning we were supported by people, by nations, because they understood that we share common values, we simply want to live, and the people understood, they imagined what will happen if such evil attacks them, and therefore we were supported by people, and I thank President Biden and all the leaders who, since the very beginning of the invasion, Putin's invasion started to support us, they, based on their values, they, they were based on the voice of, of their people, and it, it is impossible without people, and I am sure that this nation chooses leaders and presidents and it seems to me that no matter whom the nation chooses, first and foremost, it seems to me that everything depends on the unity within this or that state. And if the people are with us, any leader will be with us in this struggle for freedom. I call on a Ukrainian reporter. Yeah, 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 with pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes, please, Inter. Irina Ivanova, Inter TV Irina Channel, Ivanova, Ukraine, Inter -TV and I have a question for both leaders. So today, during the G7 meeting, the discussion focused on developing Ukraine's air defense system based on the most advanced Western complexes and uh, also on enhancing long-range capabilities. So my question is, can you provide any details on the initiative and about the readiness of our allies to take part in it? Thank you. I'd be happy to respond to that. We have acquired commitment from five countries so far for Patriot batteries and other air defense systems, as well as we let it be known to those countries that are expecting from us air defense systems in the future that they're going to have to wait. Everything we have is going to go to Ukraine until their needs are met, and then we will make good on the commitments we made to other countries. I think President Biden already answered your question, really. Uh, he knows, uh, and uh, all our other partners, they know that urgently we need seven Patriot systems. Yes, to save our cities, not all of them, it's a pity, but urgently seven. And we discussed the possibility of having five of them, it's true, but the partners work on it. It doesn't mean that tomorrow we will have these five systems, but we see in the closest future good result for Ukraine. You'll have some relatively quickly. Uh, American reporter, Josh Weingro Bloomberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Uh, President Zelensky shortly on the announcements, but uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you about your discussions on the situation in Gaza here at the summit. You were asked just a short time ago about it. 
after the uh, skydiving demonstration. Can you give us your assessment of Hamas's response? And do you believe that they are trying to work towards a deal, or is this response working against a deal? And what is your message to allies, including those here at the G7, about what more, if anything, the U.S. can do to drive towards uh, a peace agreement? Thank you. I wish you guys would a little play by the, by the rules a little bit. I'm here to talk about a critical situation in Ukraine. You ask me another subject. I'll be happy to answer it in detail later. But the bottom line is that we've made an agreement. I've laid out an, an approach that has been endorsed by the UN Security Council, by the G7, by the Israelis. And the, the biggest hang up so far is Hamas refusing to sign on, even though they have submitted something similar. Whether it had not it comes to fruition remains to be seen. We're going to continue to push. I don't have a final answer for you. Uh, and to President Biden's point, a question about today's uh, uh, discussions. Uh, President Zelensky, the $50 billion today, you've had the supplemental, of course, from the U.S. Cong Congress recently. Can you give us an assessment of the situation on the battlefield right now and what has been given now, how long will this get you uh, in terms of either stopping the Russian advance or making headway uh, on this? And how long will it last you if indeed future leaders or current leaders are unable to reach consensus on further aid packages? And President Biden, I'd welcome your assessment of the situation currently on the battlefield and what difference the supplemental has made as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Indeed, we, we were expecting the fundamental package of the support within the Congress of, of the United States of America. And truly, it, it was a long pause for our warriors, first and foremost, but it is important and we are grateful that in the very end, we have this supplement, and this will for sure strengthen our warriors. Yes, this, this has given the opportunity to the enemy within this pause to try to occupy Kharkiv, but that attempt was stopped by our warriors. They were repelled. The enemy was repelled, and we, despite everything, disrupted all their plans, and it seems to me that that is the most important thing. Uh, what this uh, supplement that will arrive gives us, it enables us to fully equip the reserves, those guys, those brigades that are ready, so, so that they provide for, for the opportunity to rotate our units on the battlefield, so that they can have some rest, so that the brigades can regenerate, so that other brigades enter the battlefield instead of them with equipment. This is what the supplement gives them, so the raise of morale, but also the raise of strength of our brigades. And it seems to me that this is the most important. For how long this will, this will be enough? Look, we, without package, have been holding the lines for eight months, and the Russians had no successes. And therefore, the, the question on, on for, for how long it will be enough? No, I think the, the question has to be for how long the unity will last. The unity in the United States together with the European leaders. How these or those elections will influence this unity. It seems to me that we should look on this exactly this way, to preserve unity, to preserve the integrity of the world, integrity of the democratic world, because if Ukraine does not withstand, the democracy of many countries will not be able to withstand, and I'm sure of that. By the way, the idea that we had to wait till we passed the legislation overall, even held up by a small majority of our Republican colleagues, was just terrible. And uh, there's a lot more money coming beyond what's already come in the other tranches that are available now that we pass the legislation. So they'll have what they need and get it there as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Telegraph, please. 
Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Yaroslav Zharin of Telegraph UA. Thank you for this opportunity. I have a long way from Kyiv and have enough time to prepare such long question. Uh, firstly, uh, to Joe Biden. Mr. President, the additional Ukraine Supplemental Appropriations Act that you signed mandated the submission of strategy war uh, for, the, uh, for the war in Ukraine within 45 days after its enactment. This deadline passed on June 8th, and uh, now yet uh, the international community has not seen this strategy. Has it been developed? And if the strategy is classified, what step does your administration plan to take uh, to hasten Ukraine victory in the war? It's my first question. The second will be to the president. What was the last part of your question? Uh, has it been developed, this strategy, and uh, what steps does your administration plan to take to victory Ukraine in the war? The steps we're going to take to make sure that has, the, Ukraine has victory in that Russia does not prevail is continued support, what we just signed. We signed that, and a significant number of nations have signed it. We have convinced the G7, we've convinced we've got support of the G7, and quite frankly, 48 other countries. We sat with the Prime Minister of, of Japan, South Korea. We have 50 nations have signed up beyond the NATO and the G7. And so we're going to stay as long as it takes. With regard to the plan, that is a, that is a plan in process now. We're discussing with our Ukrainian friends exactly what it would be. We have a lot of movement toward that. We know the outlines of it. We have not done the detail of it all. But we know what Ukraine is capable of doing when given the material to defend themselves, and that's exactly what they're doing now. And my second question, second question is to President Zelensky. It will be in Ukraine, and recently you have made a couple of, of sharp statements regarding China, and there are rumors in press regarding the possible supplies of uh, Russia's weapons to China. Apart from that, China is, is actively promoting its own peace plan among uh, certain countries. What are the motives of Beijing now, and would it be possible to change the vision of China regarding our war, and which role the U.S. can play in this? And the final question is, 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 is China um, a, a partner of, uh, of Russia in these uh, okay, crimes that it commits? Yes, I understood that your trip was long. Uh, so, the, so uh, first of all, I had phone conversation with a leader of China by phone. He said that he will not sell any weapon to Russia. That is the first. We'll see with you. We'll see. But he said to me, if he is respectable person, he will not, because he gave me the word. The second, our, you know that, you know, very good with details, our peace formula is very open for everybody, basing on charter, yes, your nation, and, and you know that it's, it bases on next principles, territorial integrity, sovereignty, nuclear security, food security. If China has alternative view on it, it can prepare alternative peace formula. If we share common views on it, like with globally, with all the world, I think so. So if they share the same way to peace, we will find dialogue. By the way, China is not supplying weapons, but the ability to produce those weapons and the technology available to do it. So it is, in fact, helping Russia. Thank you all so very much. Appreciate this concludes our press conference. Thank you, everybody.